Okay. Um, so this is from an European viewpoint, and as I say, what we're doing at the moment, uh, I'll probably, I'll probably mention that, uh, that, that we work, we've built up a team principally of, um, you know, highly qualified executives who've lost their jobs during the current uh, the economic recession, um, and they're actually helping us to construct the application uh, to, to Europe uh, for um, a, a project which will communicate, um, you know, the the need to cycle carbon, water, and nutrients um, based around the the operation oasis uh, concept. Um, so that's where we're at at the moment. Um, so uh, and, and, and part of that. Um, uh, but of course, needs to be uh, you know, obviously we need, we need to do communication locally, but also to um, you know, communicate the message uh, through international conferences, both within Europe and, and beyond. Um, I suppose that the one question would be, you know, if, if you have any uh, connections with, with people who, who you know, the people who host European conferences who might be interested in in hearing about this approach to uh, reclamation and carbon pricing and so on. Um, I have made presentations to a number of international mm. but you know <coughs> when some of these things are sponsored by United Nations I mean the whole protocol and the whole mm. processes you never can tell how when you are likely to get a feedback uh, in terms of um, EU, uh, like I just mentioned to you, I just started in Abuja by making, I've made two presentations already to so, EU ambassador in Nigeria, we was never expanded to include other ambassadors, mainly because of the, the kind of reaction that one got from the initial whereby the EU countries felt that, look, this is something that should not be limited only to EU countries. Mm -hmm. So, I have the two major ambassadors that coordinated the... So, whatever we are doing today, because I informed them about this, mm -hmm. I think there will be need for us to communicate okay. to the head of the EU mission in Nigeria. Uh, because that could be a starting point. Mm. I mean, I know you have your contact here and all over, but it will also be nice since it's been mm. uh, is in focus. Mm. And since I have already started propagating many fake species with them, mm. uh, they will be probably more receptive if they now know that there is a collaboration mm. between faith and, yeah. you know, approaching it from a completely different perspective. So I, I think that, so that we can make available to you. Okay. Yes, and then, so what, so you, you put it in touch with them after letting them know? Yeah, or whatever you're going to do, let me put it that way. Okay. Whatever we're, we're going to do here as a body, yeah. as if, and when we are going to work together. Okay. We probably will do it here, and then we we'll also do it with a, yeah. with a mission, since I had already started uh, communicating with them. Okay. Yeah. There's also, we've also got a platform at the Arab Water, the second Arab Water. Okay. Um, oh, the forum, that's right. Which is in Cairo in November. Okay. Um, so again, I don't know if that's, that's of interest to you as well. Yes. 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 Okay. I mean, so, I mean, if, if people wanted to, to, um, to address them, you know, how, how would you go about that? Do you want to have an opportunity to speak to the summit? Is that 
Um, I think this time around I'll, I'll have, I think I'll have a platform, but mm. it depends on, um, on, uh, mm. on the organizers and, and my government, because I go representing, unfortunately, or unfortunately, representing my government. I mean, my government co-opted me yeah. as a party delegate, so, uh, if you know what I mean. So I, when I go to any of these mm. tests or the summit, it's like, even though I was co-opted in collaboration with the government, mm. but I speak not so much for faith, I speak for the government. Which is yeah. the aspect that unfortunately because it reduces, I don't find right. my capability to become the activist that I have always been because when, once you're there for the government, there's a limit, political wouldn't permit you to become the true activist that I like to be. So I've, I've had that problem since mm. I was called into the party okay. delegate. Uh, and I've, I've used that as a platform as well. Mm. The benefit there is that you carry the red tag, which, <laughs> <laughs> which gives you some kind of uh, uh, diplomatic uh, uh, position okay. in the world, but outside that, uh, sometimes uh, I remove my tag and, you know, just okay. go in there ordinarily because mm -hmm. the protocol, the whole process uh, is very daunting, very, very daunting. Yeah. Well, I could we could we help, help by being, <coughs> in, in some way, your independent grassroots voice? Yes, that's right. something we could do. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's something we'd love to support. Um, as I say, I know Seven Suzuki would be interested as well. Mm -hmm. you, you know, have you been in touch with him recently? No, no, okay. no, 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 I think he knows of my work since I do it. Yeah. We have not really been in touch Okay. Okay. Um, what else is there? Is, is there a note on, on your website you had um, Exxon Mobile? Yes. Mobile. Yeah. Um, yeah. On, 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 on the phone. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, what are what, what, what they interested in? Okay, I have a very interesting one. They are fond of the giving of a bit of money. And, uh, but I, I have had to pay heavily for it because so many people can see the relationship. But, um, they are doing it because they they want to be seen as mm -hmm. contributing mm -hmm. to reducing the effect. Point is commendable. Mm -hmm. That's right, yes. Because of the flaring especially, they are flaring that. And um, I know that the last time I spoke with them, they, they asked to have faith to produce some or let them have anything that will paint them as trying to engage in carbon stock. And uh, of course we gave them something which from my understanding was not completely acceptable to them. They didn't tell me that. But the only way I could that was the following year, the level of funding we get from them reduced by about 50%. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, uh, but they said it was due to uh, economic downturn. But I, I discovered with my colleagues and we knew that yes, but because we, we tried to um, not pull the clock, but at least let them do more in terms of. Um, the amount of flaring that they, they generate in the Niger Delta. I tell you that one, in the Niger Delta. So, um, um, I, I suffer from this whole thing. And my people know that I'm engaged in, mm -hmm. in, um, in 
my two matters. And I cannot understand why I should leave the pollution right. the oil spill and the degradation that takes place and then go all the way to the dead. <laughs> and I would, 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 would I be interested in um, looking at helping to secure a future supply of renewable energy? Would that be on their agenda? Um, well, when I the, the proposal I gave to them was how to do with uh, reducing, I mean, producing and um, what do you call it now, energy saving device that right. will clean up the, the um, oil kind of um, effect of emission mm. on the uh, on the engines and so on. I saw them, I mean, the way I saw it was that they were not quite happy because of the huge investment that we mm. were going to, to think about. So I don't know, I mean, uh, we, could, we could also, we could, something we could, you know, look into yeah. and uh, produce a paper for them to, to work on. Mm. But they, we are still working with them, they are still they are still out, but yeah. uh, they can give up a bit of money. They might be interested in, mm. in, in something which absorbs some of the carbon emissions that they produce, or yeah. that they produce from their products, as well as, say, um, a future supply of renewable energy for, you know, fuels that will last forever, is it? Yeah. Um, so that's a conversation I'd love, love to have. Um, and I know I had done the figure up in a moment just to say what sort of things you, you, you'd be into. But there's another thing I'm working on, it is this.
make our impact. And we want to be down there. Uh, 
first of all, Brahim Chidana informed the various institutions that, look, we have this partnership and these are the areas of operation, these are the things we like to do. And um, we should be, I think, the first phase uh, first of the whole thing is to come together, have a memorandum of understanding or some form of collaboration joint venture arrangement. Then approach the, uh, the various communities, first of all, to inform them yeah. that there is a body like this existed that can carry out X number of uh, uh, assignments and projects. And then the other thing will be the funding, uh, using that uh, platform to say we need this. Or they may even thereafter invite the joint venture to come, and, uh, which was one we have been doing in a small scale whereby we, we inform and they invite and then we discuss with them and you know, so, so that, that, that's the way I like to, to see. I mean, I don't know if that's the back up to the whole thing. It's like that. Hey, hey, well, that is my uh, commitment to come a huge force. And uh, I, I, the problem we don't have a very good strategy to to achieve this, but the reality of it is, is, is a plan to enable them to achieve what they really currently are going to do. So, uh, and Ethiopia is on a shipping route for most of the oil tankers. They all travel past their shores, yeah? So it, it could be set up very easily, a demonstration project in Ethiopia. Uh, and if that happened, they would die a very happy man. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what sort of strikes you when I'm looking at, uh, again, at your website, when you're talking about how, how, when the desert encroaches, then these communities are forced to migrate effectively onto other people's farmland. Yeah? What would be lovely would be to have a small pioneering community actually relocate instead of to someone else's farmland to the coast where we actually run as pilots. And, you know, because what the data that we need is, is to be able to demonstrate, you know, what the options are. I mean, and, you know, if we can start to, to reclaim deserts, as they say, from the coast, but then, you mean, that, that would then uh, it would give, well, give humanity, wouldn't it, uh, an awareness of what the options are. Yeah. Um, well, let me intervene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know, yeah. in Africa, land is like, you know, everything. What, why we, what we need in Makoda is successful is that instead of going somewhere else, I mean, people were able to go back to their original land. Yeah. yeah. You know, so that is the area we're going to be looking at. Okay. People that have migrated out of their natural mm. land, if we can get them to go back yeah. to their land, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot because, you see, if you're going to, they claim the coastland. Uh, somebody's going to come out some, some day and say, look, this place used to be London. Yeah, Whereas if you reclaim an area that has been encroached upon and get the original people that only allowed to go back, that would be a better touch to my forward. Not to reclaim the coastland and then. That those people that have been driven away from the encroachment, the most. Uh, uh, do I mind looking at it? Okay. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's. it's on there. So it's on there. Because every land in Africa, yeah. even in this 12,000 square miles of desert, is still owned well, by somebody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have only really migrated out. I need to recover it tomorrow, I tell you. Mm. <laughs> so I'm going to recover it and say, that's fine. <laughs> 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 the, the Egyptian embassy once said, when I asked for on the land, they yes. said, uh, it's, it's, um, it's a desert, you know. Uh, we don't know who owns the land. This is the, the, the Egyptian embassy in London. Yes. They said, you could probably buy a strip of coastline for a few channels. Yeah. Providing you can find out who owns the land. So that, that's a big issue. Yeah. 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 All the lands belong to somebody. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. but, um, uh, yeah. it's, 
it's a very interesting thing about I mean, if you look at what's going on in, in South Africa today and in Zimbabwe, it's all about land that, mm -hmm. you know, which um, people are making claims to. And, um, so, yeah, so that, that would be, which is why I have, um, I think in a number of my writers have, have made it clear that First of all, stop people from migrating away from the land. But even where they have migrated out, try to get them back to their land. Mm. I mean, why have they built me a house? It's because the community that used to live in that land before it was encroached upon by the desert, some 20, 25 years ago, had the opportunity of coming back. Yeah. And they said, well, since you made it possible, Please have a bit of it, a bit of yeah. the house. Yes, it's only in third century, because it's an existing part of your program, isn't it, to, to, to fight the encroaching desert. And we, as those of us are saying, it tells us a small pioneering community who would um, be able to acquire land at the coast and then move back in. Is, is that a, does that make sense? No, no, I didn't get that in the story. Can you repeat that? Um, I think it's, 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 it's part of your existing program yes. then is to help communities to fight the encroaching desert yes. Yes, and to prevent them from migrating and to, yeah, and to reclaim that's why indeed yes. but uh, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that one of the things that perhaps we could do as an, as an additional item would be to have a small, say a pioneering community who would investigate what it is, whether, it is whether it is possible to um, to acquire an area of <coughs> arid coastland, yes, and then actually move back in. Does that, does that make sense? Because, because that, that, that's, that's supplementary to what you're already doing. You see, most coastlines belong to government. Yes. You know that. Mm -hmm. In Africa. And as we found out in Spain, so there were companies that were Most coastlines, they tell you from to the surf to it also belongs to the government. And so you have to take that into consideration that you're going to be dealing with companies. Mm -hmm. As a game, you would do this project, Matara, what with government? The government said to us, what with us that this is the most affected area. Mm -hmm. It has been damaged, it has been taken over by the data. You go and see if you can do something. And that was how we, we, we took the challenge, you know, even, when, even though it looked impossible at that time. Uh, but as soon as that happened, the original owners of the land came back. Did you see what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, the, and the deal was how they were conducting the government because they, the land belonged to them. My son went to, my son works for one of these telecommunications, he is uh, a director or a manager, and he had some business to do in Abuja, and he turned out that he needed to see a permanent secretary who was going to handle his project. And he sent his card to this permanent secretary, I don't know, you have the same thing here, the permanent secretary, mm -hmm. the next layer to the minister. And maybe he saw the name. Uh, he had a boy, but wasn't people waiting to see him. He asked my son to, to come here, and my son went to him and said, Are you the son of so, 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 so. my son said yes. He said, I don't know your father, but what he has done to my community. Whatever you want here to let me do it. You know, my son went back and he got the bushel for his boss. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 but that's not by the way. Okay. Um, so, here was a man who was living in Abuja, a permanent secretary. I mean, obviously he was no longer, you know. Mm -hmm. But he got to know that his community now have grazing fields. His community now have uh, farming lands. His community now have uh, water. They, they have a lot of, they have adequate rainfall as it is, can't do it for So, a man like that, you, you can 
destined to do virtually anything for, to, to enable you to expand your project because he was one of the original owners. Okay, am I making an example? I was not owner of that land. So, and that is the area we have to, but when it comes to that, mm -hmm. that is the aspect of the negotiation mm -hmm. that you must leave to us because we, because we are Africans, we understand the, 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 the culture the, yeah. of the people. We, yeah. we have a road to the various institutions that will help us achieve all these goals. Because as you can see from that photograph there, uh, mm -hmm. we have had dealings with mayor, we have ministers, that was over uh, this project. So, I think that aspect of it you can use to us, and mm -hmm. that's something that can be spelled out in the amendment that there is. And of course, there will be need for us to, to mm -hmm. communicate, to be talking to each other, so that we can also, mm -hmm. in your specialized areas, we may be able to come into it, to mm -hmm. help guide you, to help you. And then in our own specialized areas, so you can. So that is the whole yeah. essence of the collaboration. Uh, <coughs> I think we're beginning to see something come together. So, uh, so what we bring to the table, to try to summarise it, um, obviously we have the have the Oasis concept. Yes. yes. Uh, we have uh, our scientific and technical advisory board, yes. and with that here, you know, they are uh, in a quite general science. Uh, here um, we have the the resource and the skills to construct uh, the application yeah. for funding. And uh, we have um, we have the we have the ear of the of the uh, funding consultants mm -hmm. for Europe um, and indeed their counterparts in the Brussels Brussels office. What else we got? Um, communication. And uh, yes, the communicating strand of the uh, Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but we're also um, the social mm. network in our own way. We are, yeah. We are. It's an indicator in the project. Yeah. That will be out in, in uh, presentations. But, but also, we have some quite nifty technical uh, details. That, you know, mm. Okay, so I hope you've catch, captured all that. Well, we know what we're going to be bringing to the table. Then let's now go one step further mm -hmm. to determine, because we have to spotlight some pilot projects. Yes. Uh, for us to be able to attract funding, for us to be able to get various stakeholders mm -hmm. to take interest in what we're saying, we need to identify that we can begin to work on immediately, even with our own resources. And when something can happen, you know, I might make an understanding. You are, you are. I'm not sure whether you want to do um, immediately, and if you're a that's very much.
um, for us to implement or to start with. Um, because we don't want it, we don't want the cost implications or the cost elements to get something to uh, that's why I think we like to see some costing um, of all these things. You have the scientific um, mm-hmm. yeah. 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 So it would be nice to see that without um, committing too much of your um, everybody. Um, well, we my resources and and, and, um, and, um, and, and, and and energy mm-hmm. as well to be difficult to some because we have our own projects, much as we do, mm-hmm. but we've got to make sure everything can fit in it yeah. to what we are doing mm-hmm. and then they'll convince the uh, potential partners on the partner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is where we are We have a we are we are aiming mm-hmm. for the long run. Mm-hmm. So let's have a proper um, plan in place mm-hmm. to ensure uh, a robust and yeah. obtained relationship between us. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I, I suppose that one, one of the things that we could uh, probably both commit to as, as being, you know, um, conducive to our own mission is, is, the, is the communication, isn't it? Spreading yeah. the word. Yeah. Um, and demonstrating to the international community and the European community in particular why um, reversal desertification mm-hmm. is to their benefit. Yeah? And so, yeah. And the first carry position why the two parties are coming together. Yeah. And then that's mm-hmm. the other thing. Yeah. 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 That's why I wanted David Bellamy in Parliament that time, yes. because he's actually a climate skeptic, yes. but he could actually uh, subscribe to turning carbon. Yes. carbon. Oh yeah, yes. yeah. Yes, he, he said the more CO2 you get in the air, the better, because it's it's, it's uh, food for plants. Yes. Yes. Which is yes. absolutely yes. right. Yes. 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 But, but what he did agree with, of course, is that if you use that CO2 to you know to boost the you know to restore the you know, the, uh, the fauna, the, the flora of the world, the vegetation. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But that's where we're going to. Yeah. yeah. So we're coming together to achieve. Yeah. 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 And it's a huge support of this lifestyle. So step yeah. one then would be the communication. Step that's two right. would be yeah. some sort of pilot demonstration of, of yeah. what is possible. Yeah. I think um, you need to... Right, you need to write your email address, yeah, that's the yeah, 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 but in terms of putting together the you know, the announcements for the outside world, they don't put that there's something we can help with as well. Yeah. You know, we'll have a, you know, you know, so on our team we've got someone who used to be she was the chief press officer for Death Row obviously, so oh, okay. you, know, mm-hmm. you know, she has the skills and the yeah. and the right content. So some of the photographs from this event, then yes. we can use uh, kind of uh, this mark we can do a good photograph. Yes, just to show that, uh, that it's a good camera for photographs, but not to show the other bit. Yes, 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 very good camera. I would very much appreciate the photograph with, with you guys. Okay, yeah, yeah. I think that's uh, it's, it's important that we do here. Uh, and then you also your email as well, because yeah. I can then email yeah. everything yeah. to you, and then you can send out the minutes. Yeah. Oh, would you be sending it out there? Yeah, for yeah. everyone, because um, yeah. you want everything to yeah. send out, yeah. so to send out to everyone. Um, would it be okay for us to announce something on our website? Oh, yes, we'd be allowed to. 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 Allowed but the 
la Very important. 
the stuff inside the tree contains salts, lo and behold, dissolved from the soils, mm -hmm. and sugar is produced by the leaf. So the massive loss of moisture, which is 98% of all the water that's drawn through the roots, evaporates through the tree's leaves, must concentrate the sap that remains in the leaf. Mm -hmm. You cannot evaporate water from that sap without changing the density at the top of the tree. Gravity must then pull the denser sap down, and for every action there must be an equal reaction. You can't have a downward flowing sap without a return flowing sap. So, so long as the downward flowing sap is always more dense than the return flow, which will always be the case because of the evaporation, we've got circulation going on in the trees. And then that, again, being a lateral thinker, you make the connection, the connection is, look how this flow and return system has got no respect for what vessel contains it. it you know, it, it will happen. So, so long as we have a, a multi system standing above ground level, which is human beings are a prime example, this flow and return system will have to affect the circulation. Now, the literature states gravity acts equally on the venous return as it does on the arterial flow because why wouldn't it? Well, actually, that's a rather stupid conclusion because evaporation from the lungs alters the densities of the blood, the capillary blood, that then passes through the heart and enters back into the main artery. So that now gives us a density imbalance. We've got a slightly denser blood in the artery than we have in the venous return. So now, posture and gravity are interlinked in the system of circulation. Uh, how can we test this? Well, that's quite simple. We lift the head end of the body. Yeah. Well, that's logical. Logical to me. So we'll see what happens if we run the head end of the body. And uh, how long it must be it? So uh, the loop of tube and stretched out across the bed. And uh, this tube is filled with water. And some yeah. small, small amount of coloured salt solution was added to the pillow end. I uh, uh, then raise the head of the bed up. Um, if I went below, say, four inches at the head end, circulation occurred, but the salt solution flowed down one side and the return flows in the same side. When I raised up to six inches, or 15 centimetres, the salt solution drove down one side and the return flow up, uh, took place in the opposite side, so we completed the circulation. And I thought, wow, this is it. And then when I went back in history, and back to Africa, a thousand years ago when they pulled the beds out of the tombs, they were all lifted at the head end. And when I asked the curator of the Boston Museum to measure one, they were raised exactly six inches at the head end. <laughs> <laughs> so they knew. They knew. <laughs> <laughs>
Ой, чекай. Ой, чекай. Ой, чекай.